Black holes leak energy. Stephen Hawking proved this in the 70s, but as far as I'm concerned, there are no simple and correct explanations of how it works. Until now. So we're talking about Hawking radiation, of course. And the most common simple explanation is that virtual particle pairs pop in and out of existence all the time, and when this happens near a black hole's event horizon, one of the particles falls in with negative energy and the other escapes. In fact, Stephen Hawking himself gave this as a pop science explanation. Interpreted in a very particular way, this is essentially correct, but it leaves so much room for misunderstanding that I think we need a better explanation. So here's my attempt. First, it's important to remember that a black hole's event horizon is not particularly special from a geometric point of view. There's no singularities there, it's just the place where the gravitational well becomes so deep even light cannot escape. More geometrically, it's the place where the spacetime becomes so warped that even the outgoing direction isn't. But because the geometry is still perfectly fine there, unlike at the singularity at the black hole's center, we can talk about quantum fields there just like we would in any other curved spacetime. Now, in classical physics, the lowest energy configuration of any field, like the electromagnetic field, is perfectly still. No forces, no waves, no particles. But when we talk about quantum fields, the lowest energy state jitters. There's always a minimum amount of oscillation of waves in the field that is occurring. In fact, in a quantum field, one way to describe a particle is when one of those wave oscillations is not cancelled out by other partner oscillations. An imbalance, if you will. So back to black holes. On the inside of an event horizon, those minimally oscillating waves exist with no problem. Some of them are propagating out, some are propagating in, others are propagating around, they go every which way. But the outgoing waves can't actually move outward, as I've already mentioned that there is no outward direction anymore. But importantly, that's only a classical restriction. In classical physics, if you don't give a ball enough energy to roll over a hill, it can never get over the hill. But a quantum ball always has a small chance of rolling over that hill regardless of how tall it is or how much energy the quantum ball has. This is called quantum tunneling. And a similar phenomenon can happen for the outgoing minimal oscillation that's past the event horizon. Even though classically it could never escape the black hole, as it would in some sense have to travel faster than light, it can quantum tunnel through the event horizon. But once it's out there, its partners that were cancelling it are no longer present, and so it becomes a real particle moving outward and away from the black hole. That is, it becomes the Hawking radiation. And on the inside of the black hole, well, that outward pointing oscillating wave had some energy that contributed to the total mass of the black hole. But once it escapes, that energy is no longer there, meaning that the energy, and hence mass, contained within the event horizon shrinks. That is, the black hole gets smaller in a process we call evaporation. So there you have it. No need for particles to pop in and out of existence. Hawking radiation is just the consequence of typical quantum tunneling in an atypical environment. How's that for a Hawking radiation for dummies?